Hey guys, welcome to the 12th episode. Yes, this is an episode, okay? Even if no one watches, it's still episodic. Alright, it's the 12th episode of the Taylor Church Show. Um, is it a show? Yeah, because I said it is. And um, the first video, the first episode, was posted four years ago. So we're, we're right on track, we're doing good. Um, but the 11th video was uh, filmed five days ago. So we're trending upwards and things are looking good for us. Um, okay, I want to talk about something that I've been thinking about lately. Um, so I play this silly little sport, okay? It's called spike ball. And I play it at a really high level. Okay, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just trying to tell you how weird this space that I'm in is. Okay, it's an obscure sport. It's been on ESPN, but it's a new weird sport, right? Um, and I play two or three times a week, and I go to tournaments all over the country probably eight or nine times a year, okay? Um, so people think I'm weird because I'm obsessed with a dorky little backyard sport, right? But it's really fun, and, you know, just like anything, it's fun to get obsessed and really good at anything, you know? So that's what I've done. But, long story short, um, I've had some trouble, and this isn't just with spike ball, you know, I played basketball all growing up, um, Played some baseball, some football. Did some karate when I was a kid until I got um, kicked in the in the jewels on my first sparring match and instantly quit. Um, um, so yeah, sports have been a big part of my life, but for a lot of it, um, I've noticed that my disdain for losing. Um, my hatred for losing, because I'm a competitive person, has been so much greater than my overall joy for winning, or my joy of competing, my joy of being in the sport, playing the sport I love. And I kind of realized that this last year, and it kind of disturbed me. So I just wanted to kind of address it. and. Um, so I, I've made some efforts at trying to, I, now I still hate losing. I always will. If you beat me at Scrabble, I'm pissed off. I can't believe you found that stupid word. I still think I'm smarter than you, but I'm, I'm trying to mitigate anger, mitigate, um, just, you know, that nastiness of, you know, being a bad sport, being, um, in a bad mood after a game like it's it's so childish and you know i think you get conditioned to think oh you know these the greatest athletes are terrible losers um but they don't have to be it's a mental decision because um, you can still compete as hard as you want as hard as you're able to um, be a fierce competitor and not be a piece of crap when you lose Okay, and you know I've never been the type to like, you know, be a really bad sport, make people feel bad. But um, I think I've lost sight of why I'm doing these things, you know. And I'm not, I'm not a professional athlete. I'm not a big deal, but I still play sports a lot, and I don't want to carry around negative energy in any capacity. So. I started thinking about, okay, what what do I get from the sport besides winning? Because when I win, I'm really not super elated, right? I'm just like, that's right, you know? And it kind of recalibrates my ego to the unhealthy place. And, um, but you know, it's, it's good because it, it motivates you. Um, I think when you do well, in one sphere of life makes you want to do well in other spheres so you know when I'm when I'm winning it 
rec league basketball, I come home and I feel like being productive. I feel like working on an essay or an article I'm writing. Um, it's, it's weird, and maybe that's just me, but I feel like success, winning, momentum, these things carry into other avenues. And so, um, you know, people might say, well, dude, who cares about a rec league basketball team or an intramural squad or a spike ball tournament? But, you know, positivity, anything good, um, I think just begets more good things. So it might be trivial to some people, but good things are just good things. So anyways, I'm trying to eliminate, you know, I'm trying to still be a fierce competitor in whatever I do, but at the same time eliminate, um, you know, those, those bad feelings. And it's been a little bit of a, an experiment. It's been a little bit tricky, but as I've kind of taken a step back and realized that this actually is an issue, you know, um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not Draymond Green. I'm not kicking people. I'm not, you know, ruining people's days, but I feel like I could have, you know, I could have been a better example, could have been a better sport in a lot of situations. Um, could have been friendlier after losses. Um, could have reveled in others' success more. Um, so anyways, with spike ball especially, since it's such a, such a niche sport, it's kind of about a community, right? And I'm able to mentor younger players and teach younger players and people that are new to the game and when that becomes my focus and when enjoying the game becomes my focus and working hard on, on the craft becomes my focus, then all of a sudden winning is just like an awesome byproduct of those other things. And if I don't win, it's a drag. Um, but I don't have my self-worth tied up in a W or an L. And I think in the past I have. I definitely did in high school when basketball was my life. Um, you know, when we lost a game, I thought my life was over, you know. <laughs> I thought if I, especially if I played badly and we lost, my, my self-esteem just went in the septic tank for for a few days um, and obviously a lot of that has to do with youth and an experience with actual life right when you haven't experienced much sports can seem like your whole world but I've had such a good time enjoying the other aspects of the game besides just doing everything I can to win. And I still do those things. I still work just as hard, but I enjoy coming out early and talking to people while we're stretching and warming up. I enjoy um, the night before a game or a tournament, you know, visualizing things and thinking about things. And I enjoy the camaraderie. I enjoy the trips, the friendships. And th there's just so much to enjoy. It seems absurd and really wasteful to just focus on the joys of winning which when it happens are great but it's such a small percentage of what you're doing you know it's like it's like focusing your whole life while you're dating on the bliss of your wedding day you know like you're gonna miss out on a lot of joy if that's the only objective you have um, you know there's there's so much going on in life it's a it's a shame to just focus on one little aspect of it right now of course we want to keep our eye singled in on whatever our goal is you know whether it's getting married or getting a promotion or getting a book published or winning a spike ball tournament or even something small right um, 
beating, beating your friend at a video game, right? But if you beat your friend at a video game, you should enjoy playing that video game. You should enjoy going to your friend's house. You should enjoy when you press pause and order a pizza. Um, but if you lose that video game, yeah, it sucks because he's going to talk trash. He's going to tell you you're garbage. But does that negate from all the joy you had up until that point? It shouldn't. So it's a lot to think about. Um, and if you don't play sports, it doesn't matter because we do this in everything we do. You know, we, you know, you can look at it from a macro point and say, okay, I hate my job, but I make a lot of money. And so I get to, you know, go on great vacations. Okay. But what percentage of your year are you on vacation? Even if it's a long vacation, say you go for, say you go for a month long vacation. That's, that's not even 10% of your year, okay? And that's where your whole focus is on. The outcome of what you're doing day in and day out, that's all you're concerned about is your outcome, your vacation. That's a pretty hollow life. Um, but I think all of us do it in, in different capacities and at different times. And some of us are more guilty than others, but... And it sounds, ugh, it sounds so cliche to say, listen, we need to enjoy the journey, okay? But it's true. Um, but here's why it's, it's such a, here's why we hate cliches. We hate cliches because we heard them a million times so they lose their meaning, you know? Um, when someone says, oh, just, just do your best. It's actually really good advice, <laughs> but it's so simple and it's, you've heard it, 27,000 times so it's lost its meaning that's why people love translating things right they say oh you know the, the Greek saying blah blah blah, blah, blah means um, to put your foot forward in success every day you know that kind of sounds weird but kind of sounds like you're just doing your best, right? But every language, you know, comes out different when it's translated into English. And we love those things. We love those little quotes, you know, like, um, you know, there's an old Hebrew saying um, that means the path is never finished until it's done. And we're like, it's true, man, that path, it's just not finished till it's done. Never thought of it like that. Because it's worded different, right? So don't, what I'm saying is don't be repulsed and turned off when you hear cliches because they're, they're true. The cliches for a reason and they're said over and over for a reason. Um, and so, you know, think of it how you will. Um, you don't need to call it enjoying the journey, but that's what it is. Okay. Um, who knows how long you're going to live. Hopefully you live till tomorrow. Hopefully you live um, to see old age. But we don't know how long our life is. And so it's, it's actually deeply sad to focus all of it on such tiny portions when there's so much to enjoy. It's something I'm working on. Okay, I play a lot of sports. I should enjoy 99% of that. You know, if I hate losing, that's fine. But it should be 1% hate losing, 99% love playing, love competing, love meeting new people, love traveling, love, um, you know, the energy of a game, love sweating and working hard, you know? The losing should be such a small part of it. But in the past, it's been a big part. Um, and so, just trying to recalibrate my life. And I, th I think all of us kind of need to do that from time to time. But anyways, thanks for tuning in. This has been episode 12 with Taylor Church. We don't have any outro music yet. 
because um, I don't have any sponsorships. I don't have any fancy microphones yet, but we're getting there. Okay, just keep listening. Keep subscribing. Keep uh, tweeting me, even though no one tweets me because my Twitter's trash. But it is Taylor Church 44 as well as my Instagram, Taylor Church 44 um, Podcast is coming soon, okay? And we'll probably upload some of these videos in audio form um, to kind of kickstart things. Just waiting on uh, some equipment to make sure the, the, the podcast sounds good, sounds professional. Um, and I want to start it with a handful of episodes um, so people can just start listening and get going. So, got a lot of content coming in soon. If you like anything I say, then keep listening. And if you don't, um, I don't know why you got this far in the video. You know, don't watch a a 16-minute video if you don't like it. What a colossal waste of your time. That's why I'm always confused why people leave these, these angry comments about how bad some content is. It's like, don't watch it. If you don't like it, don't watch. It's really easy. I don't I don't go watch anime videos all day and leave comments on how stupid I think it is. Cuz I don't watch them. Cuz I know I won't like them. Okay? I don't burn country music artists all day. Cuz I don't listen to their stuff. Cuz don't like. Okay? So, if you're going to be negative, Go climb up a tree, a lemon tree, and suck all the lemons dry, okay, if you're going to be negative. But I know you won't, because you're watching this video, you've come this far, and you're great. So, subscribe, leave a comment, tell me you love me, and I love you. No, I do. I do. I love you. And that's that. Okay? Until next time.